Hey YouTube, <clears throat> something a little, little bit different. Um, I'd like to show you. I bought this the other day, and I actually bought it through Walmart's website. Now it's not written on here anywhere, not even on the tool part. But um, what this is is a dial bore gauge, okay? Or I think maybe bore dial gauge would be the better term. But anyway, it has a range of 2 inches to 6 inches. So you could measure something like a cam bearing or you can measure something like um, the uh, bore in the cylinder for replacing, for knowing, you know, the information about pistons and stuff. So anyway, when you open it up, this is basically what you got. You got a little page here telling you some stuff and believe me, this page if you've never used one of these, or if you're not very math inclined, this page is a little helpful, but it's lacking, okay, in, in description. So anyway, the name is called Fowler. Now I've seen a lot of these uh, advertised, or not advertised, but um, questions about Fowlers on different websites. Can they do the job? And I'm here to tell you that they definitely can do the job, and they do the job very well. Now here's the thing, inside this box what you get is you get a dial gauge that is a little different than others, I don't know if you can see that, but it actually runs from 0 to 25, so this gauge is made for measuring pluses and minuses actually of a measurement, okay, so just basically a standard board gauge, and if you read here it says it's uh, graduated in five ten thousandths or half a thou as these guys have been saying and it measures from zero to twenty five thousand so zero to twenty five on each side which makes it a fifty thousandths revolution and each mark is a half of a thousand so each big line after zero in any direction is a thousand the smaller mark in between is five and then you could uh, interpolate or guess at you know one to ten 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 one to ten ten thousandths just by figuring that five is in the middle and if the needle say the needle for instance is uh, you know somewhere between the two big lines you can actually interpret interpolate that last ten thousandths number okay so we'll leave us set that in there you get this rod with it that's pretty unique they recommend you hold it at this end right here where the handle is this holds the dial bore gauge in, okay, and then this holds different anvils to be able to measure. So basically what this does is it takes the in and out measurement of the dial gauge, the action, the mechanical action of that, and turns it 90 degrees so that you can put it inside of a bore and that squeezes on this and registers a number, okay. So what you need let me just show you what you need to be able to work with this. Now, unless you have four hands or you're a lot more ambidextrous than I am, this is a micrometer holder. This is a four inch to five inch micrometer that's been, uh, you know, calibrated and I use the standard on it and whatever to get this to be exactly four inches wide. Okay, so just set that to the side for a second. Now, in this box, what you get is there's a series of washers here, small little washers, okay? And the washers range from two hundred thousandths, no, it would be twenty thousand, from twenty thousandths, okay, up to a hundred and twenty thousandths, which as you can see that's thicker there. So you might wonder why you would use these washers or whatever, but I'll just go over this with you. There's washers here, one, two, three, four of them, uh, twenty thousandths, forty thousandths, eighty thousandths, and then a hundred and twenty thousandths. And then there's also a two inch extension, which is very accurate. It's, it is two inches. So what that does is it allows you to go anywhere from two inch, from, from measuring two inches, which is, you would use a smaller anvil here, all the way up to six inches, which you would use the extension and possibly this longer anvil. That actually goes there. For some reason, this one's empty. I don't know why it's 
there's nothing missing. It actually tells you on the instructions that this is missing missing if you're working with uh, you know um, American numbers or SAE or whatever. So anyway, the way you put this thing together, you take this basically out of the box, loosen up the nut at the top here where the indicator goes. And what you want to do is you want to put the indicator in there <coughs> until the indicator ro rotates. Now you can see it's at 20. So you want to rotate the indicator approximately one turn and then tighten this back up. Okay? And that, it's obvious what that's for only after you've realized what the machine is doing. It allows you to go uh, plus or minus with this thing, and that's what you're after. Okay, so you snug that thing back up. That ha that keeps the bore, the dial bore indicator in. And then at this end, you have to put in some sort of anvil. Okay, so <coughs> what you can do is you have to choose what bore you're af you're af actually after. And I'm just going to show you something that made this the life of this thing a whole lot easier. This is an Excel spreadsheet uh, printout of all of the options that you have with all of the anvils and the washers and the extension. Okay, You have all these different options to measure all these different things. Now let's just talk about this for a second. Down here if you look, there's a, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a number 4.0000. Okay? So if you use the anvil, a four inch anvil, which would be this one over here, this last one, um, and it tells you here what they are, a four inch anvil, I would be able to measure then full up to and, and I would say 10 to 20 thousandths on each side of four, uh, four inches. All right. Now let's say that I knew that the bore was 20 thousandths over or somewhere about. In order to get this tool to work more, more accurately, they give you all these options. So in that case, I could use a, um, well in this case I wouldn't use any, let's go to the next one, 4.240. Okay, let's say it's 200 and some thousandths over. I would want to use the first washer, okay, that's 4 thousandths actually over there, and I would want to use the anvil that would be across from this, which would be, um, Let's see here. We got washers, anvils, two. And if you look here, they start at two and they run all the way up to four. So what I could do here is I could use, if I was going to measure 4.20, I would use the four inch anvil, okay? And I could use the uh, eight and four inch, eight, uh, 80 thousandths and 40 thousandths washers on the anvil to get me closer to the number I'm looking for. That's all these washers are for, just to try to get you a little bit closer. So just the basic tool, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nut off of here. This nut comes off, and I'm going to put in a 4-inch anvil. Now the way the anvil works is this part goes into this hole here. Okay, there's a shoulder on it. So if you do have to use washers, you would put the washer under the shoulder to go into the anvil. And obviously that would extend the anvil, or into the socket here. That would obviously extend this anvil out. So for right now, I'm just going to put it in here as it is. Now this, right now this uh, dial board gauge is set up at the moment that at this end to be able to measure more, most accurately four inches, okay, or 4.0000. So what I'm going to do, I'll move that out of the way, and here's how you set this thing up. Now you can see the, I don't know if you can see it, but zero is actually up here, the dial's down there. What you want to do is you want to take this, and I guess I should turn this, let me just turn this dial around so you can, well, I guess you could see it there, put it like that. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to put this in between, and I have the, this micrometer locked. Put this in between the micrometer here so that I can be able to set zero. Now the gauge moved, and I'm going to set zero, okay, 
with this micrometer. Now I'm working it around it a little bit to try and get the most accurate number. You know, you know, you want to try to head towards the center of the anvils on the mic over here. Alright, so as I do that, the anvil, or I mean the gauge moves, and what I want to do is set the gauge at zero, which would represent four on this thing. Alright, so I don't know if I'm out of camera shot there or not, but let me just move it this way a little bit. So if you see, I have the gauge between the in the, between the two anvils of the mic, and I'm moving it around a little to make sure I get the right measurement. And zero would be there, okay? And I can repeat that. So there's zero, right there. So then, what you do with this this gauge? Right now, and I, I'm sorry about the quality of this Kodak camera, but zero's up here, the gauge is down there. However, let me move you over here. When you take this and you put it into the bore, okay, and what you want to do is you want to uh, put it in on an angle and then straighten it. What you see there is that if I bring it all the way to the top where there was basically no wear you can see that this thing is a ha is five ten thousandths or less of wear it's registering that okay and and what you do and I'll just show you how to measure I'm going to go down to the center of the bore here now what you do is you move this back and forth and whenever whatever the high reading is okay let's say that by moving this back and forth and just twisting it a little and moving it back and forth you'll see that you can literally get a high reading before the thing starts going in the opposite direction and as you move side to side so it's moving there from one thousandth to half a thousandth or ten thousandths rather so at that point I'm um, 4.00 and each each mark is a thousandth and 4.0005 would be the number of that I'm measuring in the center of this bore and this has good repeatability because if I, t I took it out I'm going to put it back in I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit make sure it gets where it's supposed to be and you can see that the lowest number there is again 5 ten thousandths so this cylinder at that point that I was measuring is 4.0005 okay so the gauge is actually good I measured all my cylinders the other day and I made an Excel spreadsheet I measured the X measurements top bottom and uh, top middle and bottom I measured the Y top middle and bottom and then I measured where there is no war, wear which is at the very top where everybody calls it the ridge okay the ridge you want to measure that ridge to see just what that was that'll tell you what this was when the factory put it together and if you I don't know if you can see the gauge there but just take my word for it it's it's about three ten thousandths over four inches so what you're doing here <coughs> is you're comparing what the gauge or what the bore was to what it is now, what wore down. So you're actually measuring the thickness of that lip in there, but you're doing it by measuring everything because you're trying to get a common ground here. You're looking for the biggest number of out of roundness or out of uh, paper or even just plain wear. So there's three measurements you're getting. You're getting wear, which is the difference between the top where the ridge is here. Um, I'm down very small, maybe eighth of an inch down from the top, and I'm getting a number. And then I go underneath that and get a number. That gives me wear. And then I work my way down to get wear. But the way you use the gauge again is to be able to take it and move it back and forth. And when as you move it, if it goes one direction or the other, then you know that that's where you have to stop and read that number okay and then write that down 
So that's about how, it, how you use it. The nice thing about this here is this is what moves the gauge back in here, this little piece. Because this moves such a small amount, that's why you have all of the options and the different size anvils and the washer. It brings all the measurements within 10 or 20 thousandths. I think it's, I think it might be 10 thousandths. It'll bring every measurement within 10 thousandths that you could possibly need. And what you want to do is use those by, by trying to figure out what number do I have. So in other words, I'm measuring at 4 here. Now I know that I'm going in each direction of 4 if I need to. But actually the, the number is always going to be a bigger number so you're going to always add to this. I mean think about that for a second. You know wherever there's war, if this is supposed to be a 4.04 Chevy and I set it at 4.0, uh, chances are it's going to be more wear than less. However, sometimes at the factory they're bore at like 3.9998 and then you'd have less. That's the purpose of, of turn, getting this into the shoulder where the dial actually goes around one time. It allows it to come back. Once you set it to like four inches, then you're able to get the dial to work backwards if when you put it in here, it does come back. All right. In other words, it is a smaller hole than you thought you actually had. So, guys, if you have questions on this, you know you can make do something in the comments otherwise the brand is Fowler and I really think that this is a good little dial gauge it cost me I think eighty nine dollars I think it was on sale I think it was like twenty five bucks off on uh, Walmart's website and the repeatability what makes a gauge in my opinion good or not see as a surveyor a lot of people don't understand how to measure when you measure something you'll say oh it's exactly five feet there's no such thing as an exact measurement of any kind no matter what you're using to measure with because you can only measure to the tolerance that you're measuring to for instance this measures accurately to a half of a ten thousand or five ten thousandths rather and that's it you're not you you still have a whole lot more numbers that you can measure more minutely to get some answers to questions. However, with an engine, you don't need to know more than uh, five ten thousandths. Because if you have five ten thousandths, no matter where you are in the engine, uh, you're still measuring a good, accurate number to be able to keep tolerances as they should be. So anyway, guys, that's as far as I'm going to go here today with this. But if you have any questions, you know that's what it is. Again, this thing is a Fowler instrument. I think it's very good. Um, if you look at uh, the box, it's packaged pretty nice. Actually, the dial, the dial indicator, I'm going to take it out of here, comes with this plastic piece around this to protect that, as well as this is bolted into here with some screws with, with something that actually looks like a, uh, a rod bearing cap to keep it protected. So, you know, for $89 today, you're looking for something with precision. If you have repeatability, all right, then you have precision. Because even if even if the number I'm reading is off, the fact that I have precision in in repeatability means that my differences in measurements are still going to be right. So in other words, if I measure 4.001 and it's actually in reality 4.00 but then I compare that 4.001 to another part of the cylinder and it's 4.002 that's a one thousandth difference and even if it was originally four thousandths it's still the difference is what you're after so you don't need to have a gauge that measure that can measure an exact distance unless you're trying to make something that's that exact size that's different now I'm just telling you how to use a cheaper gauge so that to, uh, to uh, come up with the same results so what you do is you measure towards what you want it to be or what it, you, what it should be and find out the difference between that okay so anyway guys it's a Fowler it looks like part number 16445 looks like that's what it is um, two to four, two to six inch bore gauge, bow bore gauge, 
and I'm very happy with it at this point. It seems to work very well. Okay guys, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.